I need you to produce The Godfather. We need hits. Can one thing go right with this picture? Cut it! It's the best time of the year. The NBA playoffs are in full force. To help celebrate the action, DraftKings Sportsbook is serving up a can't-miss offer. This week, new customers can bet $5 on any team to win their game and get $150 in free bets instantly. You win no matter what. All DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also bet during the first round with same-game parlays. We're back this week with another All the Smoke same-game parlay. Matt, you think we're going to cash out this week? You know it, Jack. Pop over to the DraftKings Sportsbook app now to see who we're riding with this week, and let's get this paper together. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code SMOKE. Bet $5 on any NBA team to win that game during the playoffs and get $150 in free bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE at DraftKings Sportsbook. Welcome back to another edition of All The Smoke. Jack, what's good? Man, ready to roll. What's good, my brother out here chilling? Just got some good games in this morning. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I heard. I heard you was out there doing your thing at the LA Fitness. Yeah, man. You know, I hit 44, so I got to just okay. uh, drop off 44 and up. Yeah. Everybody 44 and up in trouble. Hey, when you stay in your lane, there ain't no traffic, bro. You dig. Hey, man, this interview right here is a long time coming. Um, Big facts. I'm excited we got this man here today. Uh, someone who, you know, I looked up to when I was younger, playing hoop. Uh, someone that Jack knows really well. My uh, brother. Welcome to the show, Shaheen Holloway. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing good, fellas, man. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate nah. you. I'm a big fan of the show, man. Big fan of the appreciate show. Appreciate that. Now, thank appreciate you for your you time, here. man. Uh, a lot of new big stuff is going on for you, so we appreciate you sharing some time with us. Um, let's get to it. Uh, you guys... As you, as the head coach, former head coach of St. Pete, made a historical NCAA run uh, this past March. Before we talk about that run, tell us how that job came about. Uh, you, the AD that we used to be, the AD at um, St. Peter's, he worked with me at Seton Hall for eight years. And we got the job over there. He called me up. You know, I trust him. You know, I believed in his vision. Gave him my first opportunity, and then the rest is kind of history. What was that experience like? Obviously, you know, coming from Seton Hall, going to a smaller college, but then being able to build them up, uh, not only into a Cinderella story, but just a well-disciplined team that played hard, had a lot of heart. Uh, what was that? Talk to us about that process and how that happened. You know, it was, at first it was tough, right? Anytime you go from a high major to a low major, right? Um, things that you're not used to, you know, as far as budget and how you travel and, you know, having a shrimp coach and things like that. So I had to work through all that stuff. But at the end of the day, to be honest with you, Matt, I wish we just got dudes that, that wanted the ball, right? Mm -hmm. Just dudes that was hungry, had a chip on his shoulder, that was under-recruited. Um, people didn't believe in them. I brought them in. You know, I like tough guys. I, I, I played a certain way, so I want guys mm -hmm. to fit my personality, right? So when I was going through the process of recruiting guys, I wanted guys like that, guys that, you know, just hungry and just got something to prove that want to, you know, <laughs> eat your food, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the guys I brought in. And, you know, it was a build-up for three years. And to be honest with you, I thought year two, we had a good chance of doing something special, but COVID hit. Mm -hmm. um, and then year three, you know, we kind of went up and down. Then, you know, the fourth year, we kind of put it together and kind of made this run. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Obviously, situa situations like this are always bittersweet when you're working with the lower major program because when you do, find, when you do get that success – you know you're going to go, you know, up up to the major league, so to speak. Uh, being you built such an amazing energy and and identity for it, how hard was it, and what did you tell your guys uh, when you decided to take the seat in uh, seat seat hall head spot? Well, I'll be honest with you, Matt. It was it was easy, right? Um, mm -hmm. Not say so easy in this point. The guys made it easy for me, right? I went in the locker room, and we was in there for three hours, bro, just mm -hmm. chopping it up. Kicking it, and they'll go like, Coach, you gotta go. You know, that's home. You work your butt off for this opportunity. Like, that's something that's 
we would do if we had the opportunity. Right. So when they told me that, you know, it was it, it made it easy for me. Um, and then the next two hours, we, we were just in there just reminiscing of the journey and they making fun of me the way I coach and the way I talk and, you know, all the other stuff that the, you know, the players love to do. But no, it was easy, man. They, they made it easy for me. For sure. That's, that's beautiful. Uh, looking back on the journey, on the experience, what particularly stood out to you about this tournament run? You know what? Just, right, for these guys, you know, and obviously I'm sitting here talking to you guys. I'm, I'm blessed to be here, but it wasn't for those guys. I wouldn't be, be here today talking to you guys, right? So for me, for them, it was like everything, right? You know, you at a mid-major, you know, you work your, your butt off. You look at this type of stuff on TV growing up. And for them guys to be in that spotlight and perform the way they performed, mm -hmm. like, I just was sitting back taking it in. Like, for real, for real. Like, I'm sitting there like, these guys get a chance to build their brand right now, right? You know, we got the white kid on my team, Doug Eddard. Like, he's making a killing right now, right? With a name, mm -hmm. image, and likeness because his beard and the way he played and America loved him. And these guys are like, now starting to get the everything that the high majors get, right? right? All the attention and stuff like that. So I just love the attention for them. And to be honest, you're just playing against the best teams and knocking them off. <laughs> Real mm, talk. I feel that. Uh, what was it like to finally sign your name on that dotted line? You know, getting a chance to play there, going back, going down, and then coming back now. What was it like uh, when you signed your name as the head coach at, C at well, your alma mater? Right. Right, so I'm going to be, you know, this is a real show, so you got to be be real, right? There's right. no fake stuff here, right? So, you know, I had to make sure they understand they wasn't going to hit me with the hometown hero nonsense, right? Because, you know, when you're going back to your alma mater, it's like, oh, you're coming back here, so now they're trying to shortchange you. I'm like, nah, you're not going to hit me with the hometown hero. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. Mm -hmm. It got to make sense for both of us. Um, and for me, to tell you the truth, when I looked at it, I had to make sure it was good because this is home. And when home, you don't want to mess it up, right? Mm -hmm. You want to go in there and make sure it's the right situation with the right people. And I trust the people that was here at the time, right now. Um, and I can't mess it up. It's too important for me. So I had to make sure everything was right. So when I signed, like, it was just like a sign of relief, right? Because there's just so much going on. Like, that run we made and coming back and everybody's happy. But at the same time, I had to make sure it was right on both ends. For me, mm -hmm. for the school, and financially. Mm -hmm. To keep it real. Yeah, works. I think I speak for all of us. We're excited to see what kind of culture you build over there and, and what you can do uh, for that program. Uh, moving on, the McDonald's All-American Game. Here we go. 1996. We go. <laughs> was it 96? Yeah, 96. Loaded. Best class ever. Man. Best class, class ever. ever. Uh, tell there's him, no, tell there's him, no, there's, no, uh, there's no argument here. But Best class we, ever been wanting to get to is <laughs> I wanted to talk to the real MVP of the game. I work with the nigga that thinks he is the MVP, <laughs> but I wanted to work, I wanted to talk to the real MVP. So see let's how quick, yeah. see how quick this motherfucker switch sides? <laughs> this nigga be this nigga be hood having so much Shaheen it don't make no goddamn sense. <laughs> Hey, so uh, talk to us about that game. Again, loaded class, loaded class. It's, it's well documented who played. Um, talk about that experience, uh, some of the guys in it, and then well, you and Jack, I want you and Jack to get to the MVP conversations. <laughs> you know what? To, to, to be honest with you, right, like that experience was everything, right? Because it was the first time that all of us really came together. Like we heard, everybody heard about each other from, the, like, like, you know, everybody from different stages, different places, and you never got a chance to really play. The game was, to be honest with you, the game was trash. The practice was, like Steve could tell you, like dudes was going at it. Like everybody had something, everybody had something to prove. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody, right? So, you know, Corey Benjamin had something to prove against Kobe. God bless yep. you, Had something to prove against Steve. Benny yep. Alexander had something. Like everybody, I had something to prove against Mike Bibby. Yeah. You know, so it was just like, <laughs> like, everybody was like going at each other's neck. The practices was like everything. Um, the game was just fun, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. So, those two days of practicing and going to like the Ronald McDonald House and visiting places in Pittsburgh kind of put things in perspective, right? Like we, you know, as athletes, we don't understand what other people is going through. So then when you go and you visit those houses and see where the kids doing stuff like that, to me, that was the best part of it. And then getting a chance to know everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Like you see people, but you don't really know them. Right. right. And then you get a chance to know people and you're like, oh, he's like me. Like he's a real dude. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. you get a chance to chop it up with people. Yeah. Like, to me, that was the best experience, man. A lot of people don't remember this, though, Shane. When we was in practice, we was going through walkthrough. And Rip Hamilton was guarding Kobe, and Kobe just swung through and went dunked it hard. And Coach was like, 
oh, y'all want to play for real? Kobe's like, no, let's really, let's get after it. And we went, and like you said, our practice was, was our game because you had Jermaine O'Neal, Tim Thomas going at it. Mm. You know what I mean? You had, you had Corey Benjamin and, and Kobe going at it, Shaheen and, and Mike Bibby. It, and, and we also had Ed Coda. Like, boys was it really was, going at it, bro. And like, and it like was Shaheen that, said, bro. It was for, me, for me too, bro, I feel the same way you felt. Like, this was our first time all together. We all heard each other, dog. But to all be on the same team, to all play together, like, that was, that, that was definitely the height. Not even the game, but like you said, just to be around everybody was the height of McDonald's game for probably me too. It was so crazy, right? Because you look at a guy, right, stack that we don't even talk about, but at the time, like, Ronnie Fields was that dude. Ooh, like, that he dude. was the dude in our class. And he before couldn't even make Kobe, it to... Before everybody. Yep. Before he got in the car accident. Ronnie was that dude. So for Ron to be out there and to be with us and not experience, man, like, and, and, and the East team was just stacked. Like, our team was ridiculous, man. We would have had Ronnie Fields, bro. Mm. Y'all didn't. Y'all didn't even need him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, think about that. Like, like, like we had the starters, and then like it really wasn't no coming off the bench. Like you had Ed Coda, right. Jermaine O'Neal, Vasil Aftermar. You had all those guys come up. Like we had a crew. Like it was just. Man, who was your, talk who was your guys' the starting five? It was it was me, Stack, Kobe, Cole. Tim, and I. And it wasn't even Rip. Oh, it was was it uh? No, Jermaine. Was, it was it was uh Jermaine, right? No, nah, Jermaine, Jermaine didn't start. Now, Jermaine came off the bench. Remember, Jermaine came off the bench with Ed Coda. I think it was, it was Vasil Eptimo. Remember, remember Vasil? Vasil? Vasil, Vasil. That's, that's, that's who you threw the bounce pass through the legs to. Yeah. Yeah, facts. Vasil. Yeah. yeah, Vasil. And I don't know how we got the star lineup, but like that's a lineup that was out there. Who was, uh, who, who was, uh, you guys remember who the other team starting lineup was? Mike Bibby, was, Corey Benjamin. Uh, Lester uh, Earl. Lester, Lester Earl. Earl. Yeah, Lester uh, Earl. Lester Earl. Uh, remember my guy from oh, Went boy, from Walton? Went from ooh, ooh. Mm, hey, he yeah, had, hey, from, he was an animal. What? <laughs> went from was a bucket. Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. No, I was gonna say that's the one thing the kids today don't understand. Because I coach my thirteen year olds, and you see with the internet, you see everything, and you know who people are before you even actually meet them. Back then, if you wasn't reading the little, the little, no, the, the, the little, the, the little magazines, you didn't know who no one was until you ran up on them in the game. You know what I mean? Obviously, when you get to the McDonald's point, it's different. But I'm talking about in the process of AAU. Like you said, you really didn't go coast to coast and really play those teams. You didn't have no kind of conversations with them dudes. Like, it wasn't like y'all didn't know each other till you actually played each other. And it's just so much different these days. No, hey, it, hey, it, hey, it, hey, it, hey Machine, yep. y'all don't get y'all, y'all don't get y'all props. You, Kobe, and them, like, y'all was really some of the first ones that them big name brands was really getting behind at a young age. Yo, I'm telling you one thing, bro. Real talk. Tim don't get his props like Tim should. Yo, Tim Thomas, like, 10th, 11th, 12th grade. Like, now Kobe took off senior year. But Tim, the stuff he was doing. He was that dude. 10th grade. I mean, he was a, a cross man, bro. Like, like he's taking it coast to coast, Matt. Throwing off the glass, catching it. Between six like, like, at 6'11", like, doing all the things like a guard do, bro. Oof. Oof, we had oof, a crazy oof. class, dog. We had a crazy class. No, nah, it was good, man. You know, and just to, to, to be honest with you, man, like anybody could have got that the, the MVP. I think because of like the way the things were set up, right? And then I was a guard that was just kind of feeding everybody, like stack. You know, it was set up for Kobe to get it. Trust me. Yeah, and, and I'll be honest with you, everybody thought he was going to going to get yeah, it. Yeah, it was like yeah. it, was, it was Kobe thing, right? It was like right. the way it was the show. But I just think that the way it was set up and you know, the thing I loved about it is with our team, no one cared who did what. Nah, for real. Right. No one hooped. cared that like Stack was doing it, then Ed Coda did it, then Jermaine did rip. Like no one cared. Like we were just out there balling. You know what I mean? And guys was having fun. And at the end of the day, like I said, most of my assists probably came from Stack. Right? Like he I remember he's every time he scored, he did this. Like all this, like, you know, that was his thing. I think that was the dollar thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's the crazy thing is I watched. Like, like I got that film, and I watched it like two weeks ago, man. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy. I gotta see some of that. I think. Yeah. He, I think. I think what my highlights of Shaheen of the game was. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember how many times you you hit Mike with the in and out? Oh my goodness. I'm talking about Yo. every play <laughs> Yo, down, be man. With you, bro. Bing, like I be honest with you. I be honest with you, bro. And no one here could say that. The person that they, they was playing against, it wasn't personal. It was personal, bro. Yeah, sir. It was love, sir. it was personal. Right? Mike, Mike like, was nice, nigga. Like, you was going up against 
Corey Benjamin, right? It was personal. Yeah, yeah it was personal. Right? Cause Corey was the dude on the West Coast. It was personal, right? Mm. Mike was a guy on the East West Coast. It was personal. Yeah. Right. So yeah. now I'm like, you know, the, the problem with us though, to be honest, we had too many dudes trying to go. Everybody wanted to go. Like, it was like, who turned, <laughs> like coming down court, who turn is it? Who, who turn is it? Who turn is it? Who turn is it? My turn. turn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was like the East, like that was our thing, man. But it was fun, man. And we won the game. So that's the big part. Great that's what I like about it. So so Mike not Mike not playing defense didn't start in the league. It's always been that way. <laughs> but you know what though? Mike was a bucket, bro. Uh, no, but look, hey, hey, he, hey, Mike, Mike, Mike ain't never seen bro. that. Mike ain't seen nothing like that though. Mike ain't really I seen. I can only imagine. He was coming from the West Coast. Imagine. He ain't really. You know, Mike had all them no look passes and shit, but he ain't never seen nobody play with the ball like she like Shaheen you know was playing mean? with and, the ball, dog. Mike, but Mike was a bucket, bro. Yeah, like Mike can no score that ball, bro. He can shoot. Always it. been a bucket. Yes, yeah. sir. One more. One more, man. Oh, man. All right, little bro. Today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped, the global leader in men's below-the-waist grooming. Great timing to be supporting not only our show, but your balls, too. April is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society, Manscaped is here to remind you to check your boys while offering precision engineered tools for your two testes. Since April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, I wanted to take a second to talk about men's health issues that are important to me. Did you know one guy every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer? So this is a reminder to all men listening. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, fam. Manscaped, in addition to providing the right tools and solutions for a safe, easy manscaping, has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. While you're down there cleaning your sack, why not go ahead and give them a little investigation for lumps, changes in any size or any pain? Together, we can save balls. Get it? To help remind guys to check themselves for testicular cancer. For a limited time, you can get their new special edition Purple TCS Lawnmower 4.0 Electric Waterproof Trimmer. This special edition trimmer is a collector's item. There's only 10,000 units in existence. So make sure you get yours today while supplies last. Once they're gone, they're gone. With the launch of their special edition Lawnmower 4.0 Purple Trimmer, Manscaped will be donating 50000 to their longtime partner, the Testicular Cancer Society, to help those impacted by testicular cancer. Get the Lawnmower 4.0 TCS Special Edition Trimmers and help Manscape raise awareness and give back to Testicular Cancer Society. Visit manscaped.com slash TCS to learn more about how to check yourself while enjoying your Manscaped products at home. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SMOKE at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off plus free shipping with code SMOKE at manscaped.com. Join the Manscaped movement and start taking care of your balls today. Your balls will thank you. So let's talk about uh, what the days are like for you now. You know, um, present day. How are you and the family? You know what, man? We blessed, bro. To tell you the truth, man. Thanks for asking. We blessed. But right now, it's a whirlwind, right? You got, to keep it real, you got 35,000 people calling for jobs. You got family members trying to hold you up, just take you up. You know you, you know how I go. You, you, you guys yeah. have been through it. You know yep. what I'm saying? You got, um, but it's, it's all love, though, right? Because that's who we are and where we come from, right? You know, that's family, and then that's what we expect. Um, right. So there's nothing new. But as far as the job, you know, just trying to get this roster together, to trying to build, trying to build guys the kind of guys I want in here, um, and ma- and make sure everybody understand that, you know, like like I'm coming here, I'm trying to win, bro. Like I'm right. trying to win this Big East. Mm. You know, I, I don't care who's coaching against who, man. I'm just trying to come here and just you know build what I gotta build. It used to be such a leg- legendary conference. Born in South Jamaica, Queens, the real New York. What was the 80s like in Queens? Man, you know how it is, man. Dudes, <laughs> dudes uh, you know, you know, you, you had the fiends on the corner. Yeah. You know what I mean? Lined up. You know what I'm saying? You got, uh, you know, you got to stick up dudes out there doing what, what they do. You know, us, the kids, we out in the park just don't know anything, right? Just mm-hmm. out there playing, have no idea what's ahead of us. Um, and then, you know, back home, it's, it's a struggle, right? It's it's you know, how you going to eat? How you, how you going to survive? Then, then you got the dope boys taking care of the kids in the, in, the, in the hood because that's what it was. Right. When did basketball come in the picture for you? Man, like, you know, right? 10, 11, right? And that just was to get out of trouble. Like, mm-hmm. just go in the park or go mm-hmm. on trips just to, so you understand. Like, and tell you the truth, real talk, like, so you can eat. <laughs> right? So you go on these trips, right? And you go on with um, AU programs and just like, 
And back then, it wasn't a lot of AAU programs. Like, Matt and Stack, y'all remember? Like, it was just like mm-hmm. maybe two or three AAU programs that were stacked yeah. with 13 yeah. dudes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right now, every parent got an AAU program because their kid's not good enough, right? <laughs> right? So every parent got an AAU program. <laughs> right. right. Everybody to, to, got one. Yeah. Right, to put their kids on. But no, it was right out there. You was like, you had to be good and you had to fight, right? So, right. Y'all, like, y'all remember going in the park and yeah. you might not play for five, six games. Like, you got yeah. next. So, when you go out there, you had to be super tough and you had to play. And for me, I always played up. So, that gave me the advantage because when I came back to my age group, it was easy for me. Remember how deep the mm-hmm. church was? Man, I talk about it all the time with these guys. Church. <laughs> I mean that that that's that's probably was a, the most legendary AAU program ever. Ever, right? They had they had they had a whip, man. But um New York has a decorated culture of point guards. Yep. Which name which one of the point guards that you was looking up to when you was coming up? Well, you know, it was Kenny Anderson and Dave Edwards. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dead. like those two guys changed the game for me. All right. And then there was a legendary dude that people never even talked about. Like he's a rucker, you know, legend, and you know, his name was Booger. I'm not sure you guys heard about Booger, the street dude. Man, man, you know I know Lil Booger, man. I played with him in the Rucker. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right, yeah. Right, so Booger was like that dude. Like, you know, before Skip and before everybody, Booger was the dude that had the handles. Booger Smith. Know, and then, huh? Last name Smith? Yeah, 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 Ed Smith, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 Booger. So Booger was the dude. Um, And then after that, you know, it's kind of, it kind of go from there, right? He's like, you know, we got Steph and Sham and Skip. You know, Kareem Reed and all of us kind of in the same era. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that. That ain't nothing but hoopers. Grandmother. You decided to move with your grandmother to escape the BS in the NY streets and go to Jersey? Yeah. What made you make that decision? Well, you know, you know really getting in trouble in, in, in New York, um, not going to school as much, making bad decisions. You no, know, my, you know, my aunt, you know, my, my godmother at the time, she called me like, yo, you got to get up out of there. Um, you know, it was a school in Jersey. I never heard of St. Pat's before, never. Um, it was a Catholic mm-hmm. school. I'm a New York kid. Who, who knows about Catholic schools, right? Right. Um, so I went out there for a summer. You know, thought, I was like, all right, no, let me try it out. You know, the first year or two, I was coming home every weekend. Now, if I got used to it, it kind of made sense, right? Um, new opportunity, new place. And to tell you the truth, for me, I never really been nowhere. So going from New York to New Jersey was like going from New York to L.A. Like, that's mm-hmm. how far it seemed to me. Mm. Right, um, just came back, you know, home every weekend. And you know what? My high school coach said to Coach Chris Evans, like, "Yo, bro, you gotta make a decision. Like, what's important to you? Going back home, being around those dudes, or being here, trying to make something of yourself?" Mm-hmm. And you had, you had you had those talks, and then basketball started getting some, you know, notoriety. People started knowing who you are, and it came easy. Mm-hmm. And as you know, I'm in Jersey, doing the same thing I did in New York, but in Jersey, people appreciate it more. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. And then you kind of like like that and love that. And then from there, it kind of shot up, took off. Mm-hmm. Nothing like feeling appreciated. Yes, sir. You came to your own when you hit St. Patrick. Same place as Kyrie, my brother Al Harrington, Jonathan Kumunga. Uh, what was your high school experience like St. Pat's? Man, I know because, you know, I got a chance to see it firsthand yep. coming up the same time as you. But tell them what the experience like playing at St. Pat's. Well, first of all, before we start, shout out to my brother Al Harrington too. Yes, you know, yes, like, sir. You know, yes, sir. Fila. Great people, man. You know. Yes, sir. Got some stories with Al, man. Al wasn't always that good, man. When we first started the program off, like it wasn't known at all, right? And legendary coach Kevin Boyer, who's now the coach at Mount Verde, right? You know, Mount Verde's the biggest high school out right now. Mm-hmm. You know, he just had a vision. His vision was like, yo, let me try to get the best players here and build it. And it started with me, and it kind of moved on, right? And now it's like a household name. But it was, it was, in the beginning, it was tough because no one knew who he was. But he put us on that stage, like going to tournaments when you were in high school. Like, both of you guys, I'm sure y'all, y'all played in the City of Palms, right? Playing the City of Palms. They're, they're playing in the Beach Ball Classic and yes. all those things. So those are the, the tournaments he put us in. And then now you're going out there, now you're playing against everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember playing the Beach Ball Classic, right? I was a sophomore, and I, I played against Chauncey Billups. I'm like, yo, this dude right here is in truth. Like... Who's this dude from Denver? Got this New York game like this. Like, Chauncey. Mm-hmm. Like, you guys remember Chauncey in high school, bro? Like, he was an man. animal. He was what? an animal, bro. He's, he had the same build he has in the NBA. The same right. size, the same build. Yeah. Imagine that in high school. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so Chauncey was like, and like, and you see that. Mm-hmm. Then you come back and you kind of work on your, your craft and you get better. And then you kind of build it year after year after year. Then by the time I was a senior, it was like, all right, well, 
It's time to go, bro. It's go time. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, from there. Well, I can say your junior year or your senior year, you started receiving a lot of national notoriety. I think it started at ABCD camp, Stack. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you go to ABCD, right? And Who was you know, there? they did a great job. Huh? Who was there at that time? Who you, was at that You name it. You name them. You, Matt, you, like anybody, and it's from all over. Like the best players from all over. Like, so back then it wasn't no Nike camp. It was no Adidas ABCD camp. ABCD was, was it. It was just mm -hmm. ABCD. Mm -hmm. And you had to That's get invited. It. it was like the best 70, 80 guys. And whoever, whoever was like, like, <laughs> like, you're playing against dudes that, I'll, I'll never forget this, man. Like, I never told the story. My, going into my senior year, I was the number one point guard. And they had me playing against this kid, little short, chubby kid. Right? It was Kale out of me. I didn't know who he was. Like, he was from Minnesota. I had no idea who he was. Came in there and, and put that work in that paint. And, and Did he still have the curl? Thing, Did like, he have the curl? He had the long curl? You know, he curl? was short, short, just, no chubby dude that would just could score, bro. Like, just yep. bucket. Like, every, however bucket. you want it. However you want it, he gave it to you. Right? Nah, and that, was, no and muscle. that was the great thing about no those muscle. camps. <laughs> no muscle at all. Just a little chubby little kid. I'm talking about with game, bro. He had game, that pain in, bro. He's putting that pain in, right? Yeah, and, those, yeah. and those are the things that you remember the most. I couldn't wait to play against him again on the circuit. Yeah, Shea Cotton was one of them dudes, too. Ooh, Ooh my man. Ooh, my man. goodness. Man, child. Oh, man. And we now, got to get him on the show. We, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. He trains, he trains kids at where we practice out down here. And I told him, bro, you got to come on the show because... Shay was that much. Shay, because Shay was West Coast. So I remember seeing Shay. I was a freshman in 94, 95. Ooh. And this is the first time I've ever seen a high school basketball game on TV when he played, Ooh. I want to say he played Fremont in the state championship. This dude, I was like, this dude's only one year older than me. Oh my God. It was unbelievable. I hadn't seen nothing like it. I raise my hands when we get to talk about him, bro. Because the Ooh, shit man. he used to, the Yo, shit he used Shay to do in games. Bro. The shit he used to do in Shay. games, bro. Oh my God, bro. Yo, Shay, we need you on the show, bro. Yo, Shay Go Cotton ahead. and Esteban Weaver was the mm. dudes, bro. Shay Cotton and Esteban Weaver was the dudes when we was in eighth and ninth, tenth grade. Those dudes was like legendary, bro. Like mm -hmm. Shay was from the West Coast, but everybody knew about him everywhere. Everybody. Yep. He was on you the know, cover of Sports Illustrated as a freshman. Think yep. about that. <laughs> Killer. Think about that, to, right? To me, it was the LeBron, it was the LeBron height before LeBron, like yeah. that type of height. That's who he was to us. I'm gonna give you one even more, Matt. Check this out. Felipe was the LeBron yeah. height before the LeBron yeah. height. True. Yeah. Felipe True. Lopez, bro. That yep. was an that, animal. Yep. I ain't beast. never seen nobody like him get hyped like 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 him. Like I ain't never seen that even to this day, bro. And he it wasn't no social media then. He had his whole country behind him too. They used to rock out for that dude, boy. <laughs> hey, they Matt, used to rock out. Can you can you imagine being at Nike camp and seeing a slam dunk contest with Shea Cotton, Ronnie Fields, Baron <laughs> Davis, and uh, Corey Benjamin? Oh my goodness! All flyers. What? All flyers. Oh my goodness. All flyers. Oh, my goodness. Talk to us about your recruiting process. Uh, obviously, number one point guard could have went anywhere. You had offers from Duke, Kansas. You chose to stay close to home uh, and go to Seton Hall. What was your recruiting process like? You know, it, it was crazy, right? St. Pat's is a small school. They only had like 200 kids, right? 230 kids. So when you kind of get used to that, and then I'm, like, I went on all type of visits. Like, I went on a visit to Cal Berkeley, right? And Sharif Abdul Rahim was there at the time. Great mm -hmm. dude. Shout out to Sharif. Mm -hmm. right? Shout out to Right, and I went out there on my visit, and I ain't never seen nothing like that before in my life, man. 70,000 people, man, everywhere. You know, I'm walking on the streets. The other side of the street, there's girls walking around with topless. I'm like, what the? Oh, this is how it is? That's how they get down out here? Right? Um, and, and Coach Bozeman had it rolling. They had Jermaine Folks and Jelani Gardner. They had, yeah, I mean, Sharif, they had the man. homie. Shout out Bozeman. Right, right yeah. they had all those dudes, right? And I go on my visit there, and I'm like, yo, this is love. Then I go on my visit to Duke, right? And... um. Me, Nate James, Chris mm -hmm. Caldwell, and uh, oh boy, that was, that was in our class that passed away. Jason uh, Collier. 16, Jason Collier. Yeah, rest yeah, in peace. You know, no, 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 I know you know, God bless the dead to him. So I'm on, on my visit with those guys there, right? Then you go to Kansas, then I go, you know, Kentucky. I'm like, so when I came to Seton Hall, it was just like, it was just different, right? It was small. I always, to me, I'm a, I love being a trendsetter. Like, mm -hmm. I always go to places where people tell me that, you know, don't go there. You shouldn't do this because they can't do this, right? Mm -hmm. Don't go to St. Pat's. Nobody never heard of them. 
go to Bishop Lachlan because everybody heard of them. No, right. I'm going to St. Pat's. I want to start my own thing. Don't go to City Hall because City Hall is down. Like, you need to go to Duke or Kansas. No, nope, I'm going to City Hall. Then by the time I left City Hall, now we get the number one recruiting class. And mm. I did that as a player and as a coach. So when I was making my decision, you know, me and Tim Thomas were supposed to go together here. Ooh. Right? Mm-hmm. So that was the whole deal. Like, we was going to go to City Hall together. Mm-hmm. And then at the last minute, he chose Villanova. And I was like, you know what? I'm going over here, man. The coach gave me the ball. You know, when you're young, you feel like, yo, I don't need nobody. People don't come with me. Mm-hmm. Right? I thought I was going to get the whole world to come with me. And then we just, I just came in just... Plus, I had a daughter at the time. Right? I had my daughter when I was in 10th grade. Um, I didn't have a father growing up, so I wanted to make sure I was there for my daughter. So right. I wanted to be close to her. Right. And that, and that, played, a, that played a big factor in me come, staying close to home. First and mm-hmm. foremost, I love to hear that. Uh, is there any truth that Coach K told you that you're the only player to turn down Duke after visiting the campus twice? Twice. Twice, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so I went on an official visit, mm-hmm. and then I went unofficially when they played um, UCLA. And UCLA had just won a national championship. So the next year they came in, and I went there. And the, the fan base was crazy, man. I ain't never seen nothing like that, even to this day. Who was on that Duke team at the time? Um, Jeff Capels. Mm-hmm. Uh, those got like Wojciechowski, right? Yep. You know, that mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, whole crew. that crew. Yeah, yeah. That, like that, that whole crew. Um, and it, you know what? Yeah. To, to be honest with you, man, like Coach K had just came back. Remember, he had set out because he had that back surgery, mm-hmm. right? And um, Duke kind of struggled. So now you remember when he came back, he came back with Avengers. Like he trying to get everybody. Um, and he, he did a great job, but you know, it just came down to being comfortable, right? Being a kid from New York, New Jersey, having my daughter and just kind of want to establish my own thing, man. Yeah. Just to be honest I with you. Respect that. Um, obviously, having a child at, at such a young age, you know, 15, 16 years old, kind of forces you to step your game up and, and be a man. Tell me what that was like juggling. Obviously, wanted to be a father. I love that you made that point first and foremost, but then school, hoop, life in, in general at that age. You know what? It's crazy, right? Because it's a kid being a kid, a kid having a kid, right? You're 15 years old, 16 years yep. old. You know, you know, we shouldn't be in the streets, but we ain't, but we in the streets. We from the inner city. It is what it is, right? You know, my community helped me out, though. I got to be honest with you, man. Like, when anybody say it takes a village, it really takes a village, bro. Like, real talk. Like, like my family was there for me, right? They, every step of the way. Um, and then, you know, you just kind of, when you playing ball and you, you know, I don't want to use this term because I don't want to be sounding cocky, you know, but like when you that guy, everybody want to help you out. Right. Like you guys mm-hmm. understand, y'all been through it. Yeah. Like, you know, when you young, everybody, yeah. when you, you know, when you, when everybody sees something that they think, okay, this guy's going to be the next one. Right. Everybody want to be around. Right. So I had a lot of people that, to help me out. Um, and then, you know, just, who I am and, the, and the, the values that I grew up with from my mother, right? Like, that was important, man, to, to be there for her and, you know, and not knowing a lot. Because, like, when you're having a kid, everything in life, there's a manual, right? Like, it's a manual. Learning on the fly. It's a dad. You're learning you know, on the fly. Facts, right? You just kind of go on what you know. Yep, right. And what you know half the time is not right, but you just do it. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of what... you know. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's, right. that's kind of what I just did, right? And, and you know, and... How it work out, it work out. And having to work yeah. out good for me. And, you know, I want to give a shout out to my daughter, for real, y'all. Like, it wasn't hard. It wasn't easy. But she graduated from the senior hall. And now she's doing her thing, man. And, oh, man, congratulations, you know, I just want to shout man. her out, man. Like, What's her name? Her name is Shatanique. Shout out. Shatanique. Shout out. Shout out. Congratulations. Congratulations. You know I mean? So, so you know, she graduated. Thing. And it wasn't easy, right? Think about going to a school where your dad went to and everybody's following you and making sure you, know, you, you can't be your own person. Right, mm-hmm. you know, and she kind of, you know, went through all that. So shout her out for you know going through that, and you know, so but then but then you start Matt and and, and stack right, but that's the beautiful part of this whole thing, right? Like, I didn't make the pros, I got hurt, right? Then yep. I graduated college, right? I've been I'm the first one in my family in my community to go to college. Now it's a norm, right? Now mm-hmm. now you start that, now it's a norm in your family and your community. Yeah, to me, right. that's the biggest thing that I ever did, yeah. bro. Was finish That's... school because now I got seven, eight little cousins and nieces and nephews, people in my community that because I did it now, they did. Now right. it's cool. So that like to me said. is the most beautiful thing. Like you Man, said, that, trendsetter. That's beautiful. Trendsetter. Dog. That's dope. Salute. A star seating hall off, the, uh, off at the jump. As soon as you hit the campus, you a star. What did that feel like? You no, know, it was, you know, it was college, right? So everything that we imagined 
going to college. Uh, you imagine the girls, you know. Jack don't know though. Jack Jack decided to take wait, his wait, talents no, uh, wait, wait, over, over the waters. Time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Jack but yeah, was big time, you know what I mean? College was dope. Yeah, explain you know I mean? to people, because people don't understand, man, how fun college was. Yeah, but, you know, everybody wasn't as fortunate as Jack. You know, Jack got a bag. At a I want to go back. Age, I want to you know go I mean? back and experience it. I still got time. J.R. Smith can do it. I can do it. Facts. Do it. <laughs> do it. I'll go with you. Nah. Facts. Let's Facts. Go to, we go to you know Seton Hall. Part you know two of how high. Yo, <laughs> part two of how high. Red and red and meth. We legal in Jersey. But, you know, Matt, you know, man, look, I mean, you know, obviously the college you went to is it, it, legendary, right? But when you can step on campus, right, and everybody know who you are, it's a it's a gift and a curse, yep, right? Because yeah. you, like, you almost can't be who you want to be because sometimes who you is is not good for, for that college, Every, right? Everybody's watching. Right? And that was kind of me. Like, I was real raw coming into mm -hmm. college, right? Right? You, I'm still, still got New York in me. I still got the, the hood in me. So I'm raw, so... And you don't want to change who you are, but you know you got to make adjustments. So yep. for me, the first two years was kind of tough because I couldn't be myself, right? I couldn't go to this dorm, that dorm. You go to somebody's dorm, yo, 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 Shaheen's here. Well, you know, he's with this girl. So you can't mm -hmm. really do what... And back then, there was no social media, and you still... Everybody know your business. Yeah. Um, so for me, I just lived in the gym, bro. Um, had a great freshman year. Coach got fired. New coach came in and just kind of making adjustments, and we really bumped heads because I'm like, yo, this is my show, bro. Mm, right? Right, and then right. the coach that came in with the same coach that recruited me from Duke, one of the reasons why I ain't go there. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so now he's my head coach right. at St. Hall's, and now we, we, we bumping heads because he want to slow the game down and play his system. I want to play my style. And I just bound you, I had to grow up. You know, and I take responsibility for that. I wasn't mature enough back then. And, you know, and then my senior year, we kind of made a run because I grew up and things kind of played themselves out. Let's talk about them Big East battles. Rip Hamilton, Khalid el Ron Artest. It was, it was legendary, right? Because I came to school because I wanted to play against Allen Iverson. That's why I chose C. Hall. Mm. He was in, like, like, and I didn't know he was going to leave and go to Georgetown. Like, 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 I wanted to play against him. Like, he was, you know how you, like, we all have somebody say, you know what, I want to play against that dude. Like, he's that. Mm hmm you know, and that's one of the reasons why I came to C Hall. Um, but then you hear, like, every team had somebody at that time that was a great guard. So every night was, you know, think about it. Providence had Sham. And Sham, my brother. Right? But, like, I wanted to take Sham head off. Like, yeah. I wanted, like, like no, bro. Like, I'm the best guard. Mm -hmm. Right? And then, you know, every team had somebody. Villanova had Alvin Williams. Think about it. He's a 6'5 point guard. Yeah, you Philly, know, Philly. You know, played in the league. You know, so every team had one of those dudes. And at the time, the Big East was known as like a real physical conference. And that's what I was built for. You decide, you, you go four years at Seton Hall. Talk to us about the process coming out of your senior year. Uh, high hopes. And they didn't end up materializing, but you still were able to do stuff. So talk to us about that, that time in your life. So, you know, I got hurt in the, in the Sweet 16, right? Um, I broke my ankle. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of rushed back because like, you, when you're 5'10", you know, you ain't 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, you're 5'10", you know, you got opportunity. So I got invited to Chicago free draft camp. Um, I still wasn't 100% Hill, but I'm like, you know what? I got to go because I missed I miss 12 workouts because I couldn't work out because of my ankle, right? So I went to the camp and um, I'm working and I, you know, I thought I did no good. So when you got a chance to go to, like, Lennon Hamilton was the head coach of the University of Miami, right? For four years, he coached against me. He had just got the head coaching job at the Washington Wizards. So he wanted me to come there for the free agent camp. I went to the Knicks because my silly self, like, New York, I'm home. I can make it. Now, back then, no one was telling you that they got three guards on guaranteed contract. So now there's Charlie Ward, there's, there's um, Chris Childs, and there's Rick Brunson, right? And Rick Brunson's my guy. So now I'm like, all right, well... I played Rick Brunson in the summer leagues. Like, I'm like, I could, I could, get, I could get his job. I get at him. Yeah, I get yeah, at him. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Right? But, like, you don't know that Rick's been there for two or three years. You know, Tibbs at the time was assistant coach. Tibbs love him. Like, hey, Mace love him. God bless the dead. Oakland, like, hey, like, he's been there for three years. Like, he's, a, he's one of their guys. Right. Right? So, I chose to go to the Knicks camp, home, 
I'm I'm in there. I'm working, bro. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Like I'm working. I'm working these dudes. Working. Like I never forget this. Anthony Mason was like, "Yo, this dude belong on the team." Like I don't know what the politics part of it. This dude belong on the team. Like Charles Oakley, right? I know he's a big brother to the show, right? So Charles Oakley's like, "Yo, he's gonna be my little man in veteran camp. Like I'm gonna take care of him." Yeah. Right. So I'm rocking. I never forget this, man. Like this sticks in my mind. That's why I tell the kids all the time. We in practice, right? So if you know Tibbs, they do three a days, and two of them is all defensive practice, right? So um, Rick Brunson came down and scored, and he elbowed me. Boom. I'm like, all right. So I went down and scored on him. The very next play, he bringing the ball up. I rip him. I scored. Tibbs was like, yo, <laughs> whoa, 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 young fella. He's a veteran. Go stand on the wall. For the next two practices, he had me on the wall, bro. I ain't said a word. So people are like, yo, Rick, why you do that, bro? You know how Tibbs is going to do that. He's like, yo, he trying to take my spot. Mm. And I'm not mad. I was mad at him then. But now mm. when you look back at him. You get it. Surviving, you feel me? So to answer your question, man, like, you know, um, you know, I had a couple opportunities in the Nets, right? Went to the Nets camp. And I, I made the team. JC K got hurt. They needed to start a point guard. So they got Travis Best. Right? So it was like, it just didn't line up good for me, man. So... Took my stuff across the water, eight years over there, made some good money, played, and came back to coaching. They call that a numbers game. A lot of, I know so many people that got caught up in the numbers game, belong in the league, but they, they, they get to teams where the roster's full. Like, it's, it's called the numbers game, and you definitely got caught up in that because everybody, everybody in our class knew you definitely was gone. Favorite country overseas you played in? Real talk, Turkey. Like, I, I went there, low expectations, didn't know. Istanbul was perfect. And then when I played in Israel, blew me away, bro. Like they had really? me on the beach. Blew me away, bro. Blew me away. You know, they say point guards are the extension of a coach, uh, you know, kind of the coach on the floor. When did you decide to take coaching serious? You know, I think like winding down my career, um, I started coaching my high school team and then AAU, you know, just to, you know, give back and be around, right? Um, and you like it because this is why I'm in coaching right now. It's about the kids. Like, mm -hmm. you can make an impact on somebody. Like, I was that kid that somebody took a second and third chance on, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then they kind of start building from there, right? Bobby Gonzalez got the job at Seton Hall, and he wanted me to come on as, like, a video guy. And I didn't want to do it because I still was playing. But I had my daughter with me, um, and that's why I got into coaching, to be honest with you guys. Um, there was no American schools over there. Close to school, two hours away. So I said, let me take a year off. Thinking in one year, I could kind of moan her to the way I want. And the coaching kind of got, it happened quick. And beyond you, it just happened like quick. Went from this to being assistant, to being a top assistant, to being this. And then now you had coach. So it happened quick. But I knew I wanted to do it when I finished, but not that quick and not that early. Mm -hmm. So you where you belong back in Seton Hall. What's going through your mind now being a child water coaching now? I can't mess it up. You know, I got to come in here and be who I am. Mm -hmm. Don't change who I am because I think who I am got me here today, right? Right, um, right. And just and just start building. Understand that, you know, it ain't going to be easy, but I'm built for it. I'm ready. Um, I put the time in. I know what I'm capable of. But I'll be honest with you, man, like, this run we, we made, like, this was for all the young coaches out there, especially African-American coaches. And I, Absolutely. I like, like, I'm... I'm for everybody, bro. Like, I'm for all coaches. Like, I'm good yeah. for everybody. But, right. like, like, we get stereotyped that we're just good recruiters, mm -hmm. right? That we can't coach. We can't X and O. We can't do that. So, in my mind, I'll be honest with you guys, when we was making that run, that's why I made that statement. What they going to say now? Because they right. there's right. always something like, oh, he can't do this, or you can't do that. All right. Mm -hmm. We beat this team. We beat that team. We did this. Mm -hmm. We did that. And to the point, like, all right, man, what they going to say now? Right. You know, like, what's the next thing? I can't mm -hmm. do what? So when we're making that run, I want to do it for all the guys that, you know, don't get opportunities because of who they are, because of the color of their skin. I want mm -hmm. to make sure, you know, give somebody opportunity and let them show you what they could do. Somebody gave me opportunity, and that's why I'm here today, bro. Real talk. Everything is about timing. Everything is about Facts. timing. Facts. Facts. Yeah, and this just so happened to be perfect timing. I know you as a basketball player, and uh, but who are you off the court? You know, a family man. You know, I got a family. 
right? Um, a mentor to these young guys who I coach every single day, right? A big brother, um, you know, just 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 somebody that trying to do, do do the right thing and just you know give back. Right? Like I don't I don't have a big circle, you know. I'm mm-hmm. I'm low key, bro. You know, I keep to myself. Got my same dudes that was with me from day one. You feel me? Um, mm-hmm. The same dude that believed in me. And just somebody that, you know, I want to be that person that there for the, the next guy who's trying to get where, I, where I'm at. You know, like like y'all platform, right? Like Real Talk, like the like the platform that, that you guys got. Like, it's inspiring, like Real Talk, because like you guys are yourself. Like, y'all not up here trying to be somebody different. Mm-hmm. And people see that and they feel that. Yep. And I think that's why y'all show is successful because mm-hmm. dudes are looking at y'all like, yo, that's me. I could do that. Look at right. all those dudes. Like, they are mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. So yeah. keep doing what y'all are doing, bro. I've been trying to get on the show, man. I love what you guys are doing because y'all keeping it real and y'all authentic. Mm-hmm. Don't change. Hey, that, but you, bro. Hey, but you, but you know what, bro? That That's a testament to you as well because everybody screaming St. Peter's, yeah, they love to see the young guys, but you one of us. So to see one of us leading mm-hmm. and, and, and doing big shit in front of the whole world, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the same yeah. love back, bro. It's the yeah. same love back, bro. No, I appreciate that. Real talk, man. Absolutely. You know, and, you know, you know, Stack, you know, I know your, your, your brother, you know, what happened to him, you know, get my condolences when you talk, man. And yeah. that movement that you made, bro, man, you, you, you changed the world, for real, big dog. Appreciate like, you, bro. For real, you, you changed the world, man. And that's why I'm going to keep it real with you guys on this show, right? They wanted us not to wear our shirts in the tournament. And I was like, we yeah. wore not Black Lives Matter shirts. Yeah. And I got slack for it. And we won. Respect. You know, and, sure we won. And, and, and we won. And, and we got a lot of, yo, bro, real talk, I got a lot of slack from it. For real. Like, I believe the companies, it. Adidas, we were Adidas, they wanted to wear shirts in the university. I'm like, nah, this is what we did. I I've been wearing it. these shirts for two years. We ain't changing because now we're in the Sweet 16. Right. And now, now it's, the nah, camera's this on is, This is what we're doing, bro. I love Period. it. Mm-hmm. Salute for that, bro. That's real shit. I love to hear that. Man. You know what I mean? Chemistry, recruiting. I mean, you're at Seton Hall now. It's not St. Pete's. Uh, you know, so what are your, 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 your strategies and how has that process been going for you? You know what? Right now, it's, it's different, Matt, right? Everybody want... So this name, image, and likeness, everybody want to know about, you know, what can you do for me and my brand? Mm. Right, so nobody care about the school no more. It's about <laughs> right. their brand. And guess it's a what? I'm, it's a business. I get it, bro. I get it. I'm all for it. You know, let the kids make their money, right? But let's do it right, right? That's you no know, time and place for that. So I'm talking to kids that, you know, once again, fit my personality. Kids that I want to bring in. Kids that's hungry. Um, I might not get the five star players, which I'm good with, mm-hmm. right? I get the three star players and make them five stars, right? Right, because like my work ethic and my individual instruction and things that I did, like, you got to realize, like, I was at this level before. Mm-hmm. I was associate head coach for eight years, so I, mm-hmm. I get it. You know, I recruited number one recruiting classes in the country. Mm-hmm. So it's no different. The only difference right now is brands. Like, you just got to try to get creative with the name, image, and likeness and, um, you know, get guys that fit what you want to do on and off the court. The difference is, too, you ain't just play, you ain't just coaching on a high level. You played at a high level, too. Right. Facts. Facts, yeah. right? Well, hopefully you could have that that Deion Sanders effect. I mean, because to all the recruits out there, there's not a hotter coach that's going to have more eyeballs on him next year. Some, mm-hmm. a lot of them want, a lot of us want you to succeed. Uh, some of them want you to fail. But nevertheless, the eyeballs are going to be on you. So to all recruits out there, that's where the. I mean, if you got people at St. Pete's image and likeness and, and getting dollars, you can only imagine what he's going to do at a major school. But I like what you said. It's a time and a place, but you got to learn some principles and some values and some morals yes. in the process. And I think yes. that's what's kind of fucked up about this process. Now, although I'm all about everyone getting money because God knows we need it, but it's just right. like when you have no guidance with that money, that's when the trouble starts. So come you know, come do your thing over here. We're going to learn some shit. You're going to get some money and you're going to become a better man and a better basketball player at the same time. So I like that. Now, Matt, that's real though, bro. Matt, that's real though, bro. Like, And that's what most parents don't understand, right? Yeah, this is... This is good, but it only lasts for a second, right? Yeah, so, right. what's the big goal? Mm-hmm. Like, so the so the, the the bigger picture is not to just make the NBA, to stay in the NBA, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's a blessing within itself, right? Okay, so how are we going to get there? Don't let three thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars change that. Mm-hmm. Take to the plan, make sure we got a good foundation in place, the right people behind you, keep working. Because you got to produce on that. Hey, keep in mind, this is kind of off topic, but when you guys get your schedule and you have like a big ESPN 
uh, game or whatever it is, let us know. We'll come shoot a show before and kind Please. of get get some more hype around it and, and, and shine some light. Yeah. We're going to do, do that with, with Dion next year, too. So Please, we, wanna, man. We, Please, want, we, want, we want to come film the practice and talk to the yeah. boys, all that, bro. Let us, come, let, it, let us come tap in with y'all. Yo, real talk, brothers, like, like yeah. anything that I could do to help what you guys are doing, please. Yeah. We got to support you, though. We got to yeah. support you. That's why I just told all the recruits what I told them, man. This is a whole plan and a process, man. We with you. We helping you. We there with you. Nah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man. You know what I mean? And I, you know, and offline, man, that's, you know, that's that connected, man. And, then, yeah, and no like doubt. I said, anything I could do, please don't hesitate. No doubt. Man, we'll man. definitely uh, exchange info. Uh, current day NBA uh, teams or players you enjoy watching? I'm a big fan of what Giannis is doing and what Steph is doing out there. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a huge fan of Damon Litters. Mm. Like, he just, the underdog, man. He just, he got that thing in him, man, that I, that I appreciate. Um, so, I kind of going around the question, man. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't have a, you know, New York is my team. You know, we, right. I'm going to stick with them because I, I'm not a, I don't jump bandwagons. But, I'm just a fan of, I'm a fan of the sport, period. I wish all the kids, I wish all the kids took the one thing from Greek Freak that I, would, I just wish all of them could take is how he appreciates the game of basketball. He loves it. Man. Truly. He, out, he go out there and play every game like it's his last, bro. And if they pick it up anything from Greek Freak, please pick that up from him. Yeah, let me ask you all a question, right? You look at the Greek Freak, and you look at Yogurts, and you look at Old Boy in Dallas. Like, why are those dudes hunger more than Americans? Good okay, question. because I'm going to tell you this. AAU, AAU, that's what done it. When these coaches start uh, following kids yeah. and flying them uh, to paying different states them. and paying them, yeah, paying them, paying them. To, to, to play in one game, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars 20000 all this, why they in the 10th, 11th grade, that messes everything up because the hunger is gone now. Greek Freak, Greek Freak started, play, uh, was, was, was started playing basketball two years before he got in the NBA. Uh, Donch has been playing, been, been playing in a, a pro since he was, what, 15, 16 years old, been playing professionally. So... The love for the game and, what, and, and, and how they care about the game is different. And you know what? That's real, bro. And that's what... So we're talking about name, image, and likeness. This plays a part in it. Like you yeah. said, dudes getting paid at a young just age. To, just and now they it. just... Now, now they, they yeah. mind is, is clouded. Yeah. I mean, like, they, like, they don't get it. They don't appreciate the, the journey that we yeah. all had to go through. Man, think about... Yeah. Stack, think about your path to there. Yeah. Matt, think about your path to Come there. Come on, man. Yeah. Like, you know if, what I'm saying? Like, it, these dudes, is, they got... They got the overtime joint. They got the G lead now. They got yeah, all these other joints. All the shit. That's giving them a couple of dollars. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yo, you missing out on yeah. the big picture, bro. Yeah. And then that's the, the balance, too, too, with me. Because, I mean, like, the perfect word, the grind. You know what I mean? Like, the way I grew up with food stamps, drugs, abuse, Facts. all this kind of shit. Like, my kids will never see that. And I'm proud that I've been able to put them in a position like that. But how do I mentally make them understand that it's still going to be a grind regardless? You know what I mean? And that's that thin line. And unless you have some real people in your ear in your corner humbling you and letting you know the, what the big picture is, that's why I feel like these kids, and it's not, it just is what it is, but uh, they're pampered, they're softer, uh, there's less fire because they're giving everything no, before they you really, the really word, deserve Matt. it. You use the best word, they soft, bro. Think about when we play AU. Did you ever see parents in, in the stands? No, did, 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 no. Like, did my your parents, parents ever travel nah, with you guys? My, my, my mama did. It's Not crazy. Once. Not once. It's crazy. Yep. All right. Nah, I, I, like I, you I, said, I, that I, was some real shit, too, when you said, like, yo, when you go on these trips and, like, even that McDonald's meal, like, yo, like, okay, yeah, we really, we gonna eat good on this trip because Coach got us. Like, that <laughs> shit is something that kids will never, you know, really understand because everything now is just, here you go. Hey, but what's different between us three and what our kids have is everything we got is earned, not given. And they True. know that. And, and you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's one thing that instead of teaching them, they see it. You know what I'm saying? It's proof in the pudding with us. We've all earned everything and everything we got today, even earning getting to the NBA and all that. We earned it. Nothing wasn't given to us. So our kids know that. You know what I'm saying? Deep down, we might not think they see it and, we might, and they might not be as tough as we want them to be, but deep down inside, they know everything that we got, we earned it. We still but, and, and think about this for a second. Think about this for a second. I, this I am with my son. I'm sure you guys the same way. Because we got what we got, it's still not here you go. Like, I'm mm, right. my son, I put him through it. Like, bro, like, I put him through it. Like, mm -hmm. you want to do this? If you're going to do this, we doing it. Ain't no playing games with it. 
Mm-hmm. Like, ain't, I don't want to do this today. Like, no, you got to understand. And I take him to where I grew up at. So he see it. Mm-hmm. Like, he go play in New York, right? Because in that, Jersey, he's really good. Like, really good. In New York, mm-hmm. he's trash. Mm-hmm. Those, those kids over there. It's now, different. I'll be honest with you. It's different. It's different. There, nah, they're on different levels. So he, I make sure he see that and understand it. Like, yo, these are the dudes that you're going to be playing against that you're trying to get a scholarship. The next level. You, you yep. want to get it done now. He's nine. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. it. I'm a team. My boys are 13. Like, we got the number one uh, 13 new team in the country. We bouncing all over the place and really put them in the fire. Like, in the That's mix. Like, let's go. Like, one of my twin stars, one of them does it. I feel like I'd be doing them a disservice if this is my team. We running all the plays. You're going to play all the minutes. I'm a, That's going to fuck you up when I'm not your coach. And it's just going right. to give you a false insecurity in life. You know what I mean? So we're over here really trying to teach life lessons. And I think that shit is so important. Yo, Matt, that shit is real, bro. Like, <sighs> yep. Because I know you're getting held at home for not starting both of them. So that's yeah. real, bro. Yeah. But no, they are, but they understand, and I tell them why. You know, you got at, this, at, at this point. At this point, they they I'm to my these little motherfuckers are grown. At this point, my nigga, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Let me take over this point. We talk about the twins. <laughs> at, at, at this point, at this point, they probably raising him. <laughs> no, I just, hey, I hey, be, I'm I, about, they solid at that age to be so solid I, I stayed in this yeah. house for about three four days bro and these are the solidest 13 year olds I've ever met in my life bro I just be teaching them life man that's what it's about like it's it's, it's bigger than basketball basketball is going to be a, a tool that's going to get you wherever you want to go but I'm just teaching them life teaching them game it's, it's, it's fun saying, speaking of me and Jack kind of go back and forth on this what are your thoughts on the playing situation I don't like it I mean, I'm no, Jack, just, I don't, no, like, Jack it, don't right? like it neither. I don't like it, right? I don't like it. You know why? Because, like, you play the whole season, and at the, at the end of it, you have to, you know, think about it, man. Like, I'm giving somebody a break now because this guy might have that's, that's part of it, man. Like, I mean, that's not old school. Like, that's not who we are, right? That's not old school. So that's why I get mad at when my son could go to tournaments and they don't win, they get trophies. Like, man, get that trophy back. Like, you didn't right, that. Right, that shit away. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Like, it's not okay. Like, like yeah, yeah, for real, man. Like, get that trophy back. Like, you ain't earned that. Right. So, they, like, to me, the, the playing, you know, and I get it because, you know, you want certain it's guys. It's money. It's money. Yeah, you want certain that's guys in the playoffs. It's money. Right? Like, so let's say, if, you know, the Lakers ain't, like, you want them in the playoffs, right? So, you get it. Right? But I'm not a big fan of it. Take care of your business in the regular season and you'll be in the playoffs. Stop <laughs> letting these motherfuckers, stop letting these motherfuckers rest and not play when they don't want to want to play and sit on the bench for two, three weeks and say they ankle hurt. And now uh you, now you in a, a ninth, tenth spot. No. Take care of your business in them 82 games and put yourself in a position to be able to play in the postseason. Facts. I'm not mad at it. I'm not Facts. mad at that. Point, I enjoy it. Point blank period. Lot. Yeah, I'm like, I, 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 hey, I'll be tuned in tonight. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> Me too. I feel what you're saying, but I'll be tuned in tonight. I'll I mean, think about it. I mean, it's good, it's good entertainment. Right? It's good for the watch. To me, it's, like, and that's why, you know, it's funny. Like, I'm a purist. I love yeah. defense. I, I mean, that's what kind of player I was. So it's almost like the NBA is so far from what it used to be. But I'm not someone that's like, man, this is it. I just go with the wrong, you know, I just go with the wave because everything changes. You know what I mean? That's what the world is about. You know what I mean? And now they're talking about a possible in-season tournament, which sounds like some crazy oh, shit to me. But fuck. my whole thing is just like, you know what I mean? It's it's I'd rather just <laughs> I, I'd rather just go with the flow. I got too much real shit to worry about than to think about, you know, like, <laughs> ah, I hate this shit. But hey, no, it's fun to me. It's, it's it's entertainment, man. No doubt. Let me ask you guys this, because Matt, you just said it. You said you're a pers, you're a defensive guy. Right? So that's what I preach. That's what my team is about. We watch us play, right? Yeah. Like we get after it on defense. Why people don't appreciate that, bro? Because it doesn't get you paid in the, in the, the, in the attention and all the other But it shit. wins. But you yeah. win. Yeah. But you win. You're right. Yeah. But you You're win. Right. You're right. But what, 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 what did you say earlier, though? What do people want these days? They want name, likeness, image. They want attention. Offense. You know what I mean? Offense so win awards. Defense it's not win pretty. championships. It's not pretty. Facts. But you ain't yeah, it. Offense um, yeah. win awards, defense yeah. win championships, bro. Nah, nah, I'm on that. I, I be on, I be on our little team's ass about playing defense. That's where it all starts. Yeah, I tell people on my team all the time, kids, if you can play, play defense and role. make a shot, you got a chance. Play your role till they crown your soul. I forgot who Bruce who, Bowen who lyric that was. <laughs> That's but real, yeah, though. man. Do with the they going they going There's a place for you. Stay in your lane. Be you a star, star in your, your role. role. Uh, That's finals up. predictions. Who you have coming out of the East? Who you have coming out of the West? Ooh. Put you on but the, the way, spot. Well, Milwaukee is, is, is starting to, you know, the way Milwaukee is starting to 
play now, man. You know, I Wrapped think that you know they're the favorites, right? Um, yep. Miami, you know, if they could get the if they could get their whole team together and gel a little bit, so I think those two teams mm-hmm. in the West, man. I mean, you know, CP is back, right? So Ooh. right, right. Yeah. CP yeah. is back, but I tell you right there, man, what Memphis is doing, whew, like I don't know, right? It's just like, like I thought, I thought. You know, to be honest, I thought the Jazz would be a little bit better because they nucleus, right? I thought they would just be a little better. Um, They're missing that. To me, the Jazz are missing that second consistent 20-point game starter. They got Donovan Mitchell. He doesn't but really yeah, I mean, make I mean, they're paying our brother a lot of money to be that point guard. He, he should be that joint. He can pay a but lot of money. But he's not. Right? But I'm saying he don't. I like Donovan Mitchell. I think he's talented, but he don't make people better. And I thought Mike Conley would come over and help kind of facilitate that's that. That's what I'm talking but it just about. Hasn't, oh, yeah, that's what you was talking about. Conley, yeah. yeah I like Conley, but he just hasn't really been doing what I thought that, that I knew that should I play with him in Memphis that he did in Memphis. They need a star. They, they, they need a mega star. They need somebody that's going to go in there tattooed up, dunking every game, screaming after he dunk. Like, they need a KG type of guy to come to their organization to get them mm. feeling better because right now it's just mm. dull. It's been dull for a long time. But let me ask you this. And let me ask you guys this. Now, this is, can Golden State sneak up on dudes anymore? Or is yes. it over for them? I they think can, this bro. year, if Steph gets healthy, this is going to be the first time we saw their core play together in, what, two and a half, two and a half yep. years? Yep. But at the same time, it's not like they need a lot of time because they know each other like the back of their hand. You know what I mean? Experience. It's just like... It's, they, they've been there, and to me, they reloaded with young guy. Jordan Poole is an up-and-coming star. Ooh. Kaminga, Ooh. you know, he went to the same high school. He's going to be a problem. Uh, St. Dudes Pat's play their Kaminga, role. Yes, yeah, sir. dudes play their role. So I tell I think you what, and, the, and the glue to that is your man, Draymond Green. Like, no if, he's, if he's healthy... The glue. Yeah, they got a shot, bro. Because, you know, yeah. you, you, you don't know what Curry's going to do. If, yeah. if, if, the glue is, if the glue is healthy... Yeah, you know, I think they could, I think they got a shot, but We've been saying man, that. man, I don't know, I don't know if anybody could take CP and those guys off. Yeah. They're just playing at a they 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 different level. level right now, just at a different, different level. level, different level. I'm interested to see, and I've been talking about this on ESPN all last week. Is I love what Memphis has been doing, but when the lights come on, are these young players going to play like they play? Like your team, similar situation. Like when when the lights came on, normally smaller schools fall. You guys played in them lights like you belong Stepped there. Up. So I want. I, I think Memphis can do that. I just got to see it. Mm. Got to. Can Miami it, yeah. do it? I don't believe in Miami for some reason. I just don't believe in Miami. I don't believe in Miami. I don't believe in Utah. Two solid teams that play the right way are always at the top. You know, normally outside of uh, Utah this year, but. I just don't believe in them for some reason. Nah, that's that's real. How about the Sixers? Is it over for the Sixers? James Harden got to have a run right here, boy. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a wrap. <laughs> 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 that's it. <laughs> I got a. Uh, I I'm honored to ask you this question because you real New York. I'm talking about real New York. One album from an NYC rapper that you would listen to, no skips, on repeat. Mm, come on, man. See, 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 stack. See, there's a few, right? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Cause there's a few, right? Cause you gotta go back, right? Cause I'm like I'm I'm old school, right? This 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 new school stuff is trash, right? So yeah, right. You no, know, so you so you gotta go back, right? So now you listen to Biggie first joint, right? That's okay. It's classic, right? It's like okay. classic, classic. You know, okay. Mob Deep don't get another, a lot of. Mm, Mob Deep. I was waiting for that. Sure. I was waiting for the Mob Deep. You know, I was waiting for that. You know I was what I'm saying? On the West Coast, and I fuck you know, with Mob Deep. The mob don't get it. Like, like the mob don't get it like they supposed to. But I gotta go back to my brother though, man. Like Illmatic first joint. I don't. I don't skip no. Nice, songs. nice. Yes, sir. Illmatic. That's a. That's a hard one. You know that's uh, a, like I don't skip no songs on there. Like, like it's it's only ten joints. You just play it through. Reasonable doubt was tough. Yeah, it was. It was right. Yeah. But like you don't appreciate reasonable doubt until like now. Yeah. Like, we didn't appreciate when you first have put it out, right? What, yeah, have an understanding with, yeah. No, I feel that. You know what I mean? And then you look 20 years later, and he's doing, he doing that shit consistently, man. He's, yeah. he, I mean, Jay, Our, no, Jay's a GOAT, man. People say what yeah, they no want. Question. Jay's a GOAT. Because he, no question. Jay could piss him out today, and you're like, oh, wow. Long You know what I mean? Like, he still got it. Greatness. Uh, including yourself, you plus four, build an all-time New York starting five. Mm. Really? Jeez. Yep. Hit you with it. Ooh. You're the point guard, so that eliminates ooh, all the ooh. other point. You can, actually you can put another point guard at the two if you want. This is your team. Well, I'm always gonna put my brother down because you know that's my brother. So so me and Skip in the backcourt. You know, okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, 
Like, I'm going to get crucified a little bit, right? Because when you talk New York City hoops, you got to talk Pearl Washington or Kenny Anderson. But I'm going with the, I'm going with the young flavor. So I'm going okay. with me and Skip. All right. Yeah. Um, whew, man. You know, this is one that we're going to make a graphic of this. And like, you know, so our, you know the social goat. media. Like, we know the goat was from Brooklyn, right? Right. So, you know, Mike is from Brooklyn, right? Right, so, right, right, right. Right. So, so I got to put Mike on there, right? Yeah. Right. So, y'all know Shaq is from, oh, you saying Jersey. New York. Okay. So, so Shaq is from Jersey. I can't do yeah. Jersey. All right. Yeah. So, so y'all know Kareem is from the city too, right? Kareem. Mm. Right. So, that's the center. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I get homage to the, to the, you know, the, the legends. Right. Who's your wing? Right. Who's your my, wing? My, and my wing is going to mess you up, man. Best scorer I ever seen in my life, man. But Bernard King, bro. Ooh. Mm. Bernard Bucket King. getter. Best, Bucket getter. The best small forward scorer I seen. That's just me. Let me ask you a question about this one guy. The Black Widow. Ooh, ooh. Ali Mo. Ooh. He could have played in the league, bro. Ooh, ooh. He was tough. Ooh. He was tough. Oh, my goodness. I'm talking about Matt. He, he our size, but ooh. handle... No, I'm, 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 I'm very familiar. Ooh. I'm a big fan of him. I'm Ooh. a big fan, bro. Hey, let me ask you a question. Can I get two teams? Because I, I didn't <laughs> even got old guys. Can, can I get another team? Oh, yeah, just well, go ahead. No, no. Get, just, hey, just when I'm done? Hey, I'm no, done? Pick, a, <laughs> hey, pick a team to go against them. Pick a team to go against them. Yeah, to go, to okay. go against y'all. All right, so I'm going to put in the backcourt, you know, it's my brother, man. God bless the dad, Dave Edwards and Kenny Anderson. Yes, sir. Um, You know, I got to pick Dr. J. And the small forward, because he yep. just... Him, him, doc. him, him going at MJ. You no, know, it's a doc, man. Ooh. Like, the, the doc is a doc, you know what I'm saying? You can't... Doc is a doc. You know what I mean? I know my brother, Metal Peace, is going to get mad at me, Ron, man, because, you know, he's... You know, that's my brother. True bro. warrior, my brother. I always you know got to give saying? him a shout out. You guys put me in a tough spot right now. So many dudes. So like, many. You right about that. Just like, she's... Like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out who the center's going to be. I don't even know, bro. Man, y'all know y'all number guards out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure out who the center's going to be. You know what? I just take with my first group, man. And I just, you know, I'm, I know I know people will hit me up, but it's, come on, it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Michael Jordan. Come on. Yeah, come on. That's crazy. Come on, man. Really? You know what I mean? Like, what are we talking about right now? Yeah. You know, what, like, what, what are we really talking about just with those two dudes alone? What are we really talking about? Nothing. Okay, I'm going to change this last one since you're authentic New York and we already really spoke on that. Top five MCs, in your opinion, from New York. Ooh. Ooh. Right, so you got Big, Nas, Jay. What you going to do with that? You, you got to, obviously, what he did, you got to throw 50 in there. Not All bad right? at that. 50. Ooh. Man. See, I'm biased, right? I'm biased because... It's your opinion. You know, I like though. that, but he's from my hood, bro. So I gotta throw my I gotta go throw my he's from my hood. You know, he you know, he had a great run. He had a good 10-year run. You know, I gotta throw John there. Y'all, yeah, 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 probably gonna ja disagree. Rule. Nah. Hey, ja Rule, disagree, hey, to me, Ja Rule was ahead of his time. He was rapping yeah. and you know what Ja Rule would do today with rapping and singing? The hits he was making? I'm not exactly. even mad at that. You know what I mean? He's from my hood, so I gotta throw him in there, bro. Nah, like he, shout out, he shout changed out. the game. I fuck with Ja. I fuck with Ja. He changed the game, bro. No doubt. You know, he changed the game around, right? Yeah. Think about it. Nobody Man. was really doing that R&B shit like he's doing now. I was now, telling right? someone, I was arguing with someone like two weeks ago about how cold he would be right now. He was just before his time. Yeah. He would be yeah. killing, it, killing right it right now. Yeah, so I'm going yeah. with those five. I'm not mad at that. Top five coaches of all time, in your opinion? And what sport? All the sports are just basketball? Period. Mm. Top five coaches of all time. That's like I got a lot of respect. Like I like I got a lot of respect for, you know, what Pat Riley did. You know what mm -hmm. I, mean? yeah. I got a lot of respect for, for what Pat Riley did. You know, uh, yeah. you know I got a lot of respect for Lenny, what Lenny Wilkins did. You yes, know? yes. You know, I think he did it for us. You know, what I mean, I got a lot of respect for Lenny. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, on the football side, you know, I know people give give him hell, but what Bill Belichick did. Is, uh, no question. He's a genius. <laughs> Genius. You feel what I'm no saying? Question. Like, it's just, like, what are we talking about? You feel me? Like, right. What are we really talking about? Like, growing up, you no, know, you, like, like, 
like I'm just like I'm a basketball dude, fellas. Like just so y'all know, like I'm a basketball dude. Mm-hmm. Like what Chuck Daly did with those with those bad boys. Yes, yeah, sir. Like like I I read his books. Like my team had that same mentality that he had. So I rock with Chuck, man. Like I know a lot of people. I rocked with him, man. You know what I mean? Um, Chuck was a winner. Yeah, you know what I mean? And just what he, just what he did for the, you know, for those guys in, in Detroit at that, at that time, I thought was just amazing. You know, and um, like I like Dusty Baker, fellas. Mm-hmm. Dusty Baker is a legend, man. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. He went, he went to picks. my high school. He, he went to my high school. I broke all his records in high school. <laughs> He's a legend, yeah. He's a legend, was, yeah. right? Legend. You know what I mean? Just, I, like, I like, I like when dudes stand for something, bro. He, he wasn't scared mm-hmm. to speak his mind. You know, he did things the way he wanted to do them. And yeah. I think everybody who I named did things their way. It's important. It's important. No, that's, that's, shout out Dusty. I love that. Del Campo High School. You know, like, I, like you know, I say that name and some people probably don't even know who Dusty is. You know what I'm saying? Shit. If you could pick one guest for us to have on All The Smoke, who would it be? But before you answer this question, you have to help us get your answer on the show. Bam. So if I have one guest that I want y'all to have on the show, and what was the second part? You And you got to help us get your answer on our show. So it's got to be someone you know. Someone I know on no, the I show. No, it don't. You just got to help, whatever you say, you just got to help us get us, yeah. get them It don't have to be somebody you know. But I mean, most likely it's going to have to be someone you know. <laughs> right, but I look at, I look at y'all show, man. I mean, y'all dudes had dudes on it that's the real dudes that, the dudes that I look up to, you feel me? Hey, but like you, you guys... hey, you're from Queens. We just talked about it. <laughs> you can get in touch with him. Oh. Nomadic. Man. Oh, nice. Let's do it. <laughs> that's what that's we doing. need. Ooh. You know, let's get Nas on the show, bro. Yeah, we you need know, to get Nas people, on the show, man. I know, I know some people that that you know that yeah. know. You know that, I, lo- that we can I get lost to all him. my content. I lost Jungle's number. So if if Jungle happened to see this Jungle, we need, bro. I seen him at a restaurant not too long ago, but I don't want to ask him. Wrong time, wrong place. But you know what I do, man. You know, so my brother Randy, like so my brother Randy, you know, Echo him and him and Clue is is is, is partners. Okay. You know, Clue is still tight with you know with with mm-hmm. with Nas. So. So let yeah, me work yeah. that angle. Shout well, out we Clue. need that. Yes, definitely shout out Clue. We need shit. We need Clue too. I'm gonna holler at Clue. We need Clue. Nah, All Clue, right, man. Well, Sha- Shaheen, man, we appreciate your time. I man. wanna shout out your St. Pete crew. Uh, if you guys happen to see this, man, you you made all of us proud. Happy for y'all boys, yes, man. Best of luck moving forward, not only in basketball, but life. To the new uh new Seton Hall fellas, man. Best of luck. We rooting for y'all. We're gonna come fuck with y'all. Recruits. All the other shit you want to have, Pull up. you're going to be seen over here. But come yo, over here and learn how to yo, be a better man fellas, and a better man. basketball player, man. Yo, real talk, and, fellas, like, this was, like... I'm, and hold on, hold on, Shane, like, hold on, Shane. Yeah. And this ain't... And Seton Hall ain't death row. But if you want to play for a coach <laughs> that know <laughs> yeah. basketball, that played the game, and that just ain't... That and, and, and they that try to live their hoop dreams through you, come to Seton Hall. Let's do it, bro. Let's do it. You know what? Stag, you can't put this better, man. Like, no, listen, bro, for real. Like, like I'm I'm being honest with you guys, man. Like, I fucked with you guys, man. Like, you guys are no, it's love. What the culture need, you know, what's real. Appreciate y'all, that. y'all keep it authentic. Y'all keep it real. Y'all speak on your mind. Y'all speak on topics that people's uncomfortable speaking on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I think that we need, man. So thank you guys for having me on, man. When they told me about it, I said I gotta do it, man. Like, you kidding me? Like, I gotta yeah. do it, man. So thank you guys so much. And if you guys don't mind. Like my son, he, like he's killing me right now. He just wanted. Yeah, to come on, man. Say, hey, we gotta say what up to him, man. Bring it's him okay. on, come man. Come here, bro. Take your mask off. Come on, on hop in, tell him to hop in the camera, Yo, man. Matt, check it out, Matt. He got hair like you, Matt. So you know what I'm saying? Let's do it. You know what I mean? He yeah. got hair like you, bro. Yeah, What's up, nephew? What's... You know what I mean? This, this my young son, Xavier. What's this up, cool Xavier? Man. Say, say, what's up? What's up? All right, yes, sir. Get out of here, man. Come on. All right. He was hey. killing me, man. He's sitting over here like, yo, come on, dad, let me get on, let me get on, let me get hey. on. Hey, you have a responsibility. Up, like, hey, us light-skinned boys, we got we to gotta be tough. <laughs> it's hard on us because of that hair and our complexion. People going to be trying to, you know what I mean, mess with nah, us. Nah, but y'all, you nah, make but y'all get all the girls, though, bro. Y'all <laughs> get all the girls, though. Shorty, hey, 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 Shorty had that good hair in high school. 
Tell him, Shaw. She had the yeah, good yo, hair in high school, too. Are you used to have it, bro. I used to have you it. Got, you, got, you, got some, you got some Dominican in you? What you got? Nah, bro. I, used, you know, I, got, I, I, had, I had your juices and berries, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he did, bro. <laughs> hey, the ju hey, the juices and berries, why he ain't got no hair today? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> <laughs> yo, fellas, real talk, man. Thank you guys so hey, much. Hey, man, appreciate nah, you, man. I appreciate, appreciate you, you guys. All the way. That's yo, a wrap. Oh, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, That's thank a wrap, you, bro. Man, another episode. Thank our special guest, Shaheen Holloway. Best of luck to you, bro. You can catch us on Showtime Basketball YouTube or the iHeart platform, Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. I need you to produce The Godfather. We need hits. Can one thing go right with this picture? Cut it!